You're watching The View. View. The G View. GViewTV.com. Entertainment for you. Interviews, previews, and reviews. Welcome back to GView TV. Our lovely viewers, good night, good night. Um, we are here with the cast and we have a guest here tonight and we're going to talk about money tonight. You ever thought about saving your money or what do you think about when you have money to just spend it? What do you do? We have here tonight our mortgage agent and money coach, Nicole Williams. Good night. Welcome to GVU TV. Good night, guys. Thank you for having me. Good, good. Yes, yes. And how are you? I'm great. I'm excited to be here to, you know, obviously be here and speak to the great people and connect with our community and, Definitely. you know, have this important conversation. Money is always an important conversation, and, and, and I'm always on board when they talk about <laughs> money. <laughs> yes. You know, um, f financial, um, we are people that always seems to be struggling, struggling mm -hmm. when it comes to money. Mm -hmm. And everybody always wonder, you know, why, why? Yeah. yeah, a lot of people, like, I mean, for the, the very small percentage of people mm -hmm. seem like they're not. But for the most of us, it's almost like it's a paycheck to paycheck. A lot of people are just like, and you know how much is in your account mm -hmm. up to, and you're like, okay, well, this can carry me over because yes, yeah. I get paid this day. Why do you think that is? Like, Well, I think really the first big thing, it comes down to when you said that we're a people of, you know, that we're not so good with money. I think it yes. has to do with our mentality. Mm -hmm. and how we've been conditioned a lot of times how we've been what we've how we've grown mm -hmm. what we've been taught maybe what we haven't been taught when it comes to money and you know we are from a culture and from a time of the yolo you know you know like we want it now everything right. is about the now and sometimes we don't think about the planning and the pr preparation for potential future opportunities and you know and it, we can see it definitely when it comes to some other cultures and backgrounds they have conversations, they educate them from young. So having you know these types of conversations is so important, which is why I'm so happy to be here. Yeah. Okay, and uh, talking about money, is growing up with my parents, um, the first thing she always uh, teach us is to save. Mm -hmm. make, make sure that you save, make sure you put away some things aside mm -hmm. and a lot of people would take that and say, I don't make enough to save. Yes. How do you go How do you go about something like that? So the big rule I would say is, you know, everybody talks about it, all the major financial gurus, it's to pay yourself first. You know, when sometimes when we leave it to our own device, we won't do it. So make it automated. So if you get paid weekly, bi-weekly, however it is that you get paid, just set something up. Most institutions, you know, in the banks, they can do something where as soon as you get paid, the money will be automatically withdrawn. Again, people would suggest that you should be saving 10% of whatever it is that you make. 10% mm -hmm. might be aggressive for people. <laughs> and, you know, it's the truth. It, it, it could be aggressive. Mm -hmm. So I say just it's about building the habit. It's like when you go to the gym, you're not going to start lifting some massive weights right away. Right. You start off doing a little small weights and then eventually you know, you start to increase the weight as you go. So right. start off small. If that means starting off with $25, every time you get paid, start off with the 25. If you're comfortable to do the 100, do the 100. And I know our community can save because when we, you know, growing up, and I see it all the time, I still see it today, people are in partner draws and yep, they have yep. their susu or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And when they have to do that for savings, they do it. Mm -hmm. So we can do it. It's just a matter of why aren't we doing it? So right? true. It's, it's, it's like, so, so you have to kind of break yourself in a habit. Exactly, to, right? To save. Yeah. Um, going down the line of mortgage, mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of spender. Yes. Just spending constantly and, and paying rent. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, you would speak to someone and say, you know, can I get inquisitive and say, how much you pay for rent? And mm -hmm. they t the, the, the amount that they tell you that they pay for rent, it, it surpass what I pay for mortgage. Yes. Um, how do you get yourself set up mm -hmm. 
to, to buy a, 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 a home for yourself? Yeah. How do you, how you get set up for that? Because so, people would say, that I can't save to yeah. buy a house. Yeah, that's true. So again, it, I think it boils down to creating a plan. What is the plan? You know, people, everybody has, I think most people have a desire for home ownership, but it's now figuring out how to do so. Um, again, as a mortgage agent, I work with people who are ready to buy today. Some people, it might be a year from now, and believe it or not, I will work with you if it takes two to three years. Um, the first strategy is looking at where you stand today. What does your credit look like? Is there some improvements that might mean, need to be made? So we look at the credit. We'll you know, order a copy of your Equifax and TransUnion, the two credit agencies that we have here in Canada. Mm -hmm. Also, we'll look at what kind of savings you may have already. And if that's nothing, that's fine. We just build and start from now. Right. And then we look at you know debt, because we are in a society that unfortunately a lot of people are straddled with a little bit of debt. So we now look at some aggressive plans on how to actually tackle the debt, um, so that you will be on a positive footing when it does come time for you to actually get your first home. And then we start budgeting and planning, and I will work with you. And I have a team of people um, that are also on board, you know, whether it's real estate agents, um, investment advisors that can assist in ensuring that the clients are well protected and we have a strategy. So we're basically your home buying team is what we would call ourselves. Um, once upon a time growing up, um, here in, 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 in Toronto, um, they used to say um, you don't have to have a down payment. Mm -hmm. there, there's a thing that, yes, you could get a house without down payment. Yes. Is that the truth? Is, Does is it? Yeah, that, that definitely existed a lot more, you know, many years ago. But oddly enough, as a mortgage agent, I do have access currently to lenders that will um, allow you to borrow your down payment. So yes, technically 5% is the minimum down payment that's required, but there are some lenders that will allow you to borrow the down payment as long as you can service the debt. So when I say service the debt, that means what is your income to the amount of debt that you have, including the new housing cost. So that's something we would have to look at to see if it makes sense for yourself and your family. Because again, the last thing sometimes people wanna do is get into a new home, have to pay mortgage, property taxes, and then still have to repay this the down, payment. This down yes. payment loan, right? But there are options available. I think um, one of the biggest things, and it's funny how our society works, sadly enough, mm -hmm. I've seen a lot more young people talking about credit because of a Jay-Z song. Yes. Because Jay-Z <laughs> came out and said, yes. what's more important than going and throwing money at the strip club? Yeah. Credit. Credit. Because credit is. will get you everything that you want, basically. And now you have young people looking into it. And mm -hmm. it's like, before when you got credit, you just thought, okay, well, I have credit. And I think it, it, it tricks us because mm -hmm. it starts if they give you a $1,000 credit yep. card. And you're like, okay, I'll put $50 on it. $50 is nothing. And I can yeah. pay that yep. off quickly. Yep. Then the 50 will, you'll add this to that and yep. until it reaches a point and i think a lot of people don't focus on the interest rates mm -hmm. there's so many different things so what are some of like the tips that you can have for people one starting to build their credit mm -hmm. and two people that have built it ruined it mm -hmm. and now are trying to rebuild because i mean that's i've that's been it. going through mm -hmm. the home buying or looking process lately yes. And that was the biggest thing. The hurdle, That yes. was the biggest hurdle. So, yes. I mean, definitely, what, what are some of the tips that you have in terms of credit? So, for, so, the first part, which is, you know, understanding the credit. So, it's really understanding. Um, making certain that you're paying your, the, 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 the bills on time. I find the biggest, um, like, the biggest credit killer is cell phone companies, to believe it or not. It's not really as much the credit cards, mm -hmm. but I see people that would open a Rogers bill, not pay it, they get into a dispute, they don't care that you know there's probably $300 outstanding, they get so stubborn and say, I'm not paying it, I'm not paying it, now I'm going to Kudo or I'm going to Bell. And they hop around from cell phone to cell phone and unfortunately they're damaging their credit. In the, in the long run, what that does, it actually hinders you more than it hinders them. Because sure. that, that's going to be something that you think, oh, it's only $300. But what you've done now is you've now created a bad or a collection item on your credit. And then most lenders look at that and say, okay, well, if you treat this that way, how are you going to treat a potential loan that I'm willing to give you? So A, it's really understanding credit. 
treating it as it's supposed to, so pay it on time. The goal really with a credit card is to pay it off in full. So if you put $1,000 on it per month, pay the $1,000. Mm. You know, if you can't afford to put the full, pay the full thousand, at least make sure you're making the minimum payments to at least maintain the credit. The other thing with credit cards is about the utilization rate. So a lot of people don't realize that this affects your credit, um, you know, significantly. And what that means is the lender, sorry, the credit bureau will rate how much credit you have access to mm. and then how much you actually owe. So if they feel that you are constantly at, let's say, 90% of your utilization ability, or let's say 100%, mm. they think that if there's a change in your job, financial situation, you'd be less likely able to, to make the payment because you, know, mm, you owe so much, so, okay. right? That's a very big one. Yes. yes. Yeah. Because right? a lot of people think, that, like you said, the, the making the payments on time is yes. very important. Yes. But how high you get it, because they think if I have a $5,000 card, yes. even if it's at 5000 but I'm paying the minimum every month, yeah, good. Yes, I'm good. okay. No. Like, I have good credit. Exactly. Eventually, you'll start to see that your score will start to decline because it's looking at you and saying, you're at risk of potential default, risk of potential default, and it will start to actually show that. So rule of thumb is whatever credit you have access to, keep it at 50% or lower. You know, to mm. really have great credit, we say 30%, mm. but you know, 50% is a good starting point. So again, if your limit's 5,000 to your point, keep it below 2,500 and make sure you're m at least paying the minimums, okay? For clients now or anybody who comes to me and they've now are on the other side where they had credit, didn't understand it, and they kind of ruined it, mm -hmm. I say the first thing is don't run from it. I find people are always saying, oh, I don't want to know what my score is. I haven't looked at it in five years. I know I have this bill and I know I didn't pay in and it's there, but I just don't want to face it. You have to face reality, mm -hmm. right? So um, again, like I said, we have the two credit agencies. We have Equifax and TransUnion. Mm -hmm. You can actually request a free credit report from both of the um, credit agencies and yes. it's recommended that everybody, including myself, you guys, at least once a year, you request a copy of your credit bureau. A, it's yeah. to ensure that whatever is being reported is accurate so that there's no misinformation being reported on the bureau. Mm -hmm. And two, just to make sure that, you know, you can see how the lenders see you. Okay. Um, so again, if there are some collection items or things that you've neglected to pay, just take ownership of it, look at it, try to devise a plan. Right. So I would say start looking at, okay, what's the highest interest product that you mm -hmm. have? Um, and then kind of tackle paying the debt. Try to negotiate. I say if you come into money and let's say you owe creditor A $3,000, a lot of these creditors, especially if it's gone to collection, will make settlements with you. Sometimes they will settle at 50 cents on the dollar. So what, what I would do, and I well, suggest- once it, once it get I, yep. I don't cut you. Once it, it gets to collection, though, mm -hmm. isn't like but remember done dealing? Yeah, that's credit's already... It's already it, ruined, it's right? Already it is, ruined. it yeah. is. But the thing is, to, to what the, the point was, is you if you try to escape from it, it's still going to be there, right? It's still a collection item. And what it does is it will prohibit you from potentially purchasing later on. Mm -hmm. So again, there are lenders out there that will lend to you even if you've had collections. However, they won't lend to you with the collection outstanding. So they'll say, you know, we approve you for X, Y, and Z, but this collection needs to be paid in yeah. full, right? So this is why I say, try and settle it. So if you owe 3,000, you know, just call them and negotiate and say, you know, I came into some money, but I only have 1,500. Sometimes these collection agencies will mm -hmm. accept the 1,500. Um, sometimes they'll push back and say, well, no, we could, we'll take 2,000. Regardless, it's still a savings. Right. Um, what I say before you pay them, get it in writing. Mm. So get them to communicate it in writing so you have some protection. Make the payment and then you're going to want to get confirmation via um, also a letter saying that it's been paid and settled because not all the time is your credit bureau immediately updated. So, I have a, so when it comes to, because um, there's a couple different things like with credit when it comes to, because you, you hear the commercials, yes. debt consolidation mm. and um, credit counseling and yes. all these different things so two questions do you suggest like if somebody does run into a, a situation where they're mm -hmm. they have poor credit yes but now like you said they're not running from it 
mm -hmm. they want to try to tackle it. Do you suggest any of those? And secondly, how fast does credit update? Like, how mm -hmm. fast does the, the yeah. bureau, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. if you had that $3,000 debt and you paid that 1500 or a settlement, yeah. is it like next week, next month? Because mm -hmm. a lot of people are just like, mm -hmm. yeah. at, what's, the, what's the speed? What's the yes. rate? Yes, very good question. So... To start with the latter, um, it's very easy for your score to go down. So as soon as you make a mistake, they it shows. Right. You know, on the upside, it does take some time. So typically speaking, I would say um, it's usually about 12 months of showing positive credit history. So again, so now you've settled those collections, they're no longer there. You need to ensure that you have some positive credit, so probably a small credit card maybe a little bit of a, a loan, so at least two trade lines, and showing that you've made payments as agreed, because what this then shows the lenders is that you have actually redeemed yourself. Mm -hmm. And usually for them, they look at a 12-month period, okay. so at minimum 12 months. And usually in that time frame as well, your credit would obviously also start to take some bit of some boosts. Um, with the credit counseling, very good, I'm happy that you, you brought that up. Um, so I'm not saying everybody's situation is different. Everybody has a unique story. So it, it might make sense for a lot of people. The issue that I have with a lot of the credit counseling companies out there is that they don't fully um, educate the clients as to what happens once you go through a credit counseling session, right? So if, if a client understands what the potential repercussions are, then and they choose to move forward because again it's their life that's fine but i find on the flip side when clients call me and they say oh um i'm currently in a consumer proposal and um, i'm looking to purchase i have to be the bearer of bad news and say well unfortunately at this point i cannot get you any financing until you mm clear up the consumer proposal, uh -huh. okay? Um, in the eyes of creditors, it is still technically a written off debt. So you still have an R9. An R9 is, or an I9, so if it's an installment or revolving, is um, like one of the worst ratings that you can have I on nine? the credit. Yeah, so I9 would be like an installment, so like a loan payment, um, something that's an, a regular installment. Mm -hmm. a re, an R9 would be like an, a revolving credit, so like a line of credit, credit card, something of that mm -hmm. nature, okay. right? Um, but again, it gives you the worst rating because essentially what these consumer proposal companies do is they will, exactly what I said, they'll negotiate a settlement with the collection agencies, pay cents on the money, and then they will then kind of give you a loan to make those payments, but then now you're repaying back the proposed consolidated yes. debt but because they've negotiated that settlement it's technically been now written off the books of the lenders mm. which then becomes an r9 i9 however it's reported based on what you have um, but then what it does do is it puts them in the eyes it, it, it kind of rates it as as though it were a bankruptcy right so oh, even wow. though it's yeah. not legally a bankruptcy in the eyes of the lender it's as if you did the same thing. So this is the thing that I find, as long as people are fully aware of the, what it does to you in the back end, mm -hmm. and you choose to move forward, it's fine. Because I understand that some people have no other options, right. and they feel like they, you know, their back is against the wall. Um, but then I find that there's other people who do have options, but they think of it and say, oh, it's just a consolidation loan, mm -hmm. not realizing that it's not just a consolidation loan. And you know, they might do it for a small sum, and then now they're really stuck. Right. Uh, okay. Um, earlier you mentioned you have to pull a credit report, or you yes. should yes. pull a credit report once a year. Yes. Um, I I have people saying that oh my my name went to bad credit mm -hmm. and what they're asking me about I have no collective memory of what yes. happened about that. Um, how often that happened? Well, it, it can happen. Like on a personal note, there was a time. So again, I'm a proponent. Everything that I suggest to clients and to family, friends, I do myself. Mm. So I do pull my own credit, both TransUnion and Equifax. Mm. And um, I was in the process of looking to purchase another property. Mm. So I was getting myself prepared, like how I would suggest anybody else get prepared. So I pulled my own credit, right? Requested a free score. And oddly enough, there was a, an item on my credit that did not belong to me. The, and when, I, when they investigated, it was for a Nicole Williams, but we did not have the same middle name, right? So I, um, 
I had to basically show proof that my name is Nicole T. Williams. Mm. You know, the other person's was N Nicole something else Williams. The addresses didn't match. There was a bunch of inaccuracies, but I had to basically go and prove that it wasn't me. Wow. And, right. and yeah. that, that fall on your hands. because you does. Have, you have to do all of this running the leg work and around. this is why we say regardless if it's a you think you have good credit bad credit whatever the case may be it, just pull it because it could also be identity theft in this case it wasn't really identity theft it was really the um agency that made a mistake they they saw the two nicole williams mm -hmm. and they put her that other nicole williams is dead on mine so it was their error but there are times where it could be you know, um, somebody's taken over someone's identity, or um, again, it could be a bank error. It could be that the, the co uh, a collection agency that puts it on incorrectly, and you never know until you actually see it. But there is a process to dispute any items that you think that are not yours. Unfortunately, it is your responsibility to, you know, there are agencies that are, that are out there that would assist, mm -hmm. but um, I don't know if it's necessarily worth the cost of doing it. Um, like through them, as opposed to just trying to tackle it yourself. Is there someone out there uh, policing this thing? Like um, somebody use your card, mm -hmm. went in fraud, yes. you don't know, and by the time you pull your report, you're like, okay. Yes. This is crazy. Is well, if there is actual fraud, like this is where you can like file a police report. It, it, it can become an investigatable item, right? So in my situation, it wasn't really a fraud. It was just really an error. But if you have been compromised, then at that point, you definitely get law enforcement involved. Do, do you get back that money, though? Um, so as long as... So it's uh, what I would say is... If it really wasn't you, and you can prove that it wasn't you, so you have to. Prove you do. Again. <laughs> it, it, it's kind of it's it is because you know what it's very tricky. Okay, mm -hmm. um, you know I I personally never worked in loss prevention, but mm -hmm. prior to being an independent mortgage agent, I worked for one of the big banks. Okay. So I saw it all the time where people, you know, their access cards were compromised, or you know something happened where maybe someone got a, a hold of their 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 credit card yeah. you know on this is when online became so popular with online shopping people did whatever um, so it was a bit of a tedious process I will say that most of the time like the, the, the bank's fraud process is very good at um, you know really determining what transactions were legitimately the clients and ones that weren't but I will say during that period of time that you're going through that process it is a, it is a headache, right? Because sometimes they might freeze your accounts. They might, you know, um, because they they don't yes. know like who really is doing what, doing yeah. what right? How how can people protect themselves against? Yeah. So this that? is back to what I said. It's you know checking the credit. If you if you've been frauded in the past, or you feel like somebody might have compromised your information back to when I suggest the once a year. The once a year would just be for the general consumer. But mm. if you are somebody who's high risk, you know, there's nothing wrong with you checking it once a, a month. The good thing is most of the credit agencies now, they do have consumer alerts. Um, so you can request a consumer alert be placed on your credit file. And this is regardless if you've been frauded or not. Mm. And it's the onus of the credit agency to notify you anytime your credit is checked or any new um, credit is um, opened, mm. they would actually notify you. They can do it via email. Um, email. Sometimes they, you know, if you have the app, the app will, you know, ping you or notify you. So there are new, mm. newer technologies mm. that are out there to try to, you know, keep the clients as safe as possible. Um, sorry to be like jumping oh, all no, over, no, no, that's but okay. when you talk about mortgages, yes. I always hear on the news this rate is going up yes. and now you know people are staying home longer yes. because it's so much harder to get into the market yes. how for one how long have you been doing mortgages like so um in total about six years about six years yeah. what are some of the changes you've seen from yes. six years ago to today like it's trying to get into the market a lot of changes right like literally so when i before when i first started to back to what you said about the zero down payment it was so much easier a lot of people had access to a cashback mortgage you know do cashback mortgages still exist technically yes they do it's a totally different situation so a cashback mortgage to explain is if i was buying a home i could have applied through a bank to get a five percent cash back 
A lot of people would utilize this money to help with their down payment, their closing cost, or even let's say some you know furnishings yes. to, you know, for in the home. Also other things that have changed are the amortizations. Um, again, we've gone from a point where originally it was 25, then they put it up and then it went to as high as 40 years. Um, why so that's, that's having so a mortgage for 40 years. For 40 years. <laughs> wow. So the thing is, and not to be alarmed, so a lot of people don't necessarily take 40 years to pay off the mortgage, but what it does do is it helps you to qualify because the, it's like a car loan. Yes. People think about it. When The longer the car loan is, the smaller your payments, payments. Mm -hmm. and then it looks as though your overall payment requirement, it becomes a little bit easier for you to actually mm -hmm. qualify. So the strategy back then is we would, you know, qualify clients under a 40 year um, to kind of lower the payments. Right. But, you know, they could always increase payments or do things to aggressively pay it down. Now we're back to kind of being at the 25. There are, however, some lenders that do offer a little bit longer, but you do need to have 20% or more down in order to get those longer extended um, time frames. Wow. You know, also how they qualify mortgages. You know, we've gone from, you know, using the three-year uh, bank rate, you know, to now having the five-year bank rate, uh, which is the offered rate, to now being in a situation where we have, um, the, it's like the, it's, it's now the qualifying rate, right? So it's, it's so it's so different. So before when you could have qualified, so let's say, you know, a couple of years ago or, or even a year ago, you could have qualified, used the bank's five year rate. So right now the best, well not best, but one of the average five year rates we can offer is about 2.99 on a fixed. I could have qualified you using 2.99. Now I have to use um, the new rate, which is 4.99 to qualify the client. Again, that's 2% higher than is the 299. That the, is that the, the pressure? Yes. So, and again, pressure testing what they're actually doing now. Correct. Right. So it's 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 called a stress test, right? Stress so test. yeah, and that it's just to say that if the rates were to go up tomorrow or in the next year, that they that you can Could still you comfortably it? manage the payments, right? So the, a lot of these things are recent from the uh, the government, mm. Ontario government, and um, it's just really put a lot of stress. And now there's new things coming in in January as well. Good um, things or bad things? Well, <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's I, I never think of anything as a bad thing. We just have to learn to adjust, right? But it does make it a little bit more difficult, mm. right? The reality is. So back to that 4.99, now, if a bank is offering um, whatever rate they're offering, we have to offer 2% more than their five-year posted rate or the 499 in order to qualify them. So again, if a bank is offering a rate of 3.49, instead of qualifying the client at 499, have to go to I have to go to 5.49 wow. to qualify them. So there's so many things, which is why it's so important that you get a trusted mortgage representative on your side because again there's a lot of things that always change and you never know and we work with you to keep you prepared and abreast as to how things are happening wow, wow. Yeah. crazy um what, what about the last but not least what about um people that have a home already mm -hmm. and want to buy another one yes to to make some money okay um getting a second mortgage yes um i was told that the five percent doesn't apply to you again mm -hmm. because you already own yes a house. So technically speaking, if or would you be staying in this existing home or using this home to be a rental and then buying another home? Like, what would the plan be? Does it matter? It does matter. Oh, wow. oh. <laughs> so you know, on a on a just you know just to kind of explain why I say that. So if you're staying in the existing home mm -hmm. and then you're buying an investment property, that's mm -hmm. correct. You do need for most lenders minimum 20%, sometimes it's 25% to, to put down. Mm -hmm. If let's say you are um, gonna s rent out this existing home mm -hmm. and then buy a new primary residence, mm -hmm. you now can technically say this is my primary residence and then I could qualify for as little as 5% down as long as your credit income and such is makes sense, right? So again, that it really depends on what happens with the current home versus the home that you're going to be So why, why is that? Because it, it's still, <laughs> like, yeah. worst case scenario, mm -hmm. if you buy a second home, whether to live in or to rent mm -hmm. out, mm -hmm. if nobody rents it, you still have to pay the mortgage that for that correct. one and the other one Very either correct. way. So why does that? So the answer is, is it has to do with the insurance. So anytime you have less than 20% down, you have to go through 
the insurance, which is either CMHC, so Canada Mortgage Housing Corporation, mm -hmm. or Genworth, right? And it's their rules. They will only insure um, like primary residence and a secondary home. Once it becomes an investment property, their insurances, their criteria is so different and you still would, would then require the 20%, maybe 25% down, dependent on the situation. So it's really more to do with the insurance, wow. right? Um, so yeah, so that's why if the new home is now a primary residence, we could look into having the insurance, which means less than 20% down. But if not, then you do need to have the deposit. But what people do is sometimes they will leverage their existing home. So let's say you really genuinely want this to be the investment home. So when I say leverage, you could tap into the equity into your existing home, use that equity to then you know, fund the down payment for the second home, mm -hmm. and then get into the second home as the investment. Okay. Right? So there, there are definite options, right? Okay, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, viewers on the outside, oh. we're here talking to mortgage agent and money coach coach couch coach coach <laughs> <laughs> nicole williams mm. she's educating us how to use our money how to save our money how to spend our money intelligently mm -hmm. and i want to say thank you for thank, thank you very much for passing through gview yes it was a pleasure having yeah. you thank you so um, much guys. definitely let the viewers know because you said you have a team and i yes. mean i can tell you there is Money, obviously, like you said, it's a very important topic, but it's a topic a lot of people are shy about. They're yes. shy away from yep. it, um, whether it be because of credit issues or, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Some people are just, they don't want to know how much they make. So yes. many different issues, you know yes. what I mean? Yeah. Money is the biggest reason that even divorces happen. Yes. So it's obviously a very important topic. So let the viewers know where they can contact you just to even get some advice and mm -hmm. let you know what services you provide and what you could do for them. Yeah, definitely. So I am... Uh, active on social media. Um, I'm at Mortgages by Nick. Um, again, that's Mortgages, M-O-R-T-G-A-G-E-S-B-Y-N-I-K. As well as you can uh, call me or text 416-841-1791. Uh, Awesome. Yeah. Write awesome. it down, guys. Yeah. Write yes, it down. Is. You guys, you know, always inbox me. Say, yeah. Sean, what go again? Yes. So write it down. And you could check us out again. Um, subscribe to GView TV. Yeah. We're going to take a break for our cars. We're going to pay some bills. And we'll be right back after these words. GView TV.